Hey guys, so what I thought I'd do today is finally get round to uh, showing you the driving cab um, in a bit, bit more detail. Um, and I've done quite a bit of work to it since I last uploaded a video as well. Um, for a start I've got a proper Sega shifter cover on there now and I've changed out the shifter for a slightly nicer feeling one. Again, the parts that I got uh, when I've swapped this, the Astros over. Um, got the Daytona um, feedback motor and uh, shaft and all the rest of it in there and I've greased that up and that's running really smoothly now. No wobble. It auto centers because it's got nice springs on the back. Um, actually, I bought some new old, new old stock springs for this, and turns out it was exactly the same as what was in there. So I've got a couple of spare springs now. Um, got the Daytona uh, buttons, VR buttons panel in there. Uh, I've got the speaker covers in there as well. Got a nice new. Um, actually, it looks really terrible in the video, but I've got a nice new mat down there. Um, and I found out on the brake actually. Um, I thought the brake was really sort of easy to push down and that's because there was a rubber, uh, like a rubber tube that sort of sits between the uh, two plates at the back of the brake, you can't really see it in there. Um, but yeah, it just sort of squashes in and <laughs> gives you like the effect of pushing down on a brake, which I suppose it does. Um, but yeah, I've still got to uh, get rid of this natty old artwork, it's really sort of torn up and just falling apart really. I want to get the original touring car artwork for it because I figure, you know, it's a touring car machine, I might as well get it looking as nice as I possibly can. Uh, the artwork on the back's kind of ripped up, it's not doing too well. Uh, yeah, it's down there, it's all ripped up as well, which is a bit of a shame. But I'll probably get it all reprinted, um, like make it up in Illustrator or something, and get it all reprinted to the right sizes and put all this off and maybe spray up the back, because it's nice and scratched up. Um, but it's not too bad really, I mean, if you saw it when I first got it, you'd be shocked that I've got it to this state because it was it was so filthy, it was such a mess. Um, you know, it's it's a million times better, and I'm really quite happy with it. Quite happy with all the crap on top of it as well. <laughs> um, actually, I kind of intend to get a uh, like a uh, marquee for the twin and cut it down to half size and sort of have that on top make up some uh, custom touring car artwork for that just to finish it off you know but um, yeah there's still an awful lot of work to do on this um, software is another thing that I've really got to work on um, at the moment I've got a trial edition of XP64 uh, on the PC in there which is underneath the seat here um, but yeah I've got the Model 2 emulator on there, I've got MAME on there, I've got Viva Nono on there for Ridge Racer and all that good stuff and the newly released Supermodel emulators on there as well um, which is really awesome because that actually features force feedback which I can use because I've got a little adapter made by uh, a French fellow uh, I can't remember his name, Agianti? So it sounds like that anyway um, but yeah it's behind here and basically it sits between the uh, feedback motor, the original Daytona feedback motor that's in there and the Logitech board which is actually under the seat here and what it does is it translates the feedback effects from the Logitech board um, to the original Daytona motor and it's strong, <laughs> let me tell you it really is powerful and it works so well um, but yeah I'll show you that in due course uh, I've got speakers in the dash which weren't originally on a touring car cab um, I've got speakers to the left and right of the monitor. Um, again, not original to touring car, but I figure if the space is there for them and I had the speakers, why not stick them in? Um, obviously, I've got the speakers left and right on the headrest, which is really awesome. Um, really desperately want to find a backrest for this, because this didn't come with one, and I'm pretty sure I'm never going to find one. But what can you do, I suppose? At least the, the bum rest is there. <laughs> But um, yeah, I guess what I'll do is I'll uh, fire her up and uh, get, get it turned on and show you what's what with it. Okay, so what I thought I'd do to start with is just give you an overview of the front end I'm using, which is uh, Hyperspin. 
uh, which is a wicked front end, especially for like a racing cabinet where I'm probably really only going to have about 20 games, maybe 30 games. Um, and they're all selectable via the gear lever here. The gears 1 and 2 select up and down, so you've got Turbo Outrun, uh, Super GT, Touring Car obviously. Although the sound is really bad on that one. It's actually a really bad game. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention there's a subwoofer under the seat as well. Which really does kicks on when you're playing like Ridge Racer 2. Uh, yep, Sega Rally, obviously. Sega Rally 2. Haven't got the front end set up properly yet, by the way. Yeah, Sky Race. Um, yeah, you can see like the little wheel images there. They don't look so hot. And the videos aren't properly set up. They're just temporary. It's just so I could really narrow down the list of games. Because otherwise I'd have hundreds of games in there that were completely useless. So I set it to basically only display the games that I've got wheel images for. Oh, Outrun. <laughs> uh, I was kind of deciding as to whether or not to stick this one on there. But the missus likes Manx TT. She actually wants me to get a <laughs> Manx TT cab, but I'm kind of wondering where I'm going to put it if I do. Uh, Indy 500 is pretty good. Daytona 2. And of course Daytona USA. So I guess what we'll do is we'll uh, switch on Daytona USA. And basically, um, I've got everything set up so they display at their original resolutions. Now this can be a bit of a problem because Daytona USA was a 24 kilohertz game and whilst this monitor is a dual sync it'll play 15 and 24 kilohertz games uh, it doesn't have like an auto switching facility on there it has like a jumper on the um, chassis at the back that you have to sort of physically move over um, to kind of get around that a little bit I've got a uh, relay in there which is hooked up to a switch in the coin tower um, so I'll just give you an example. I press start here. So this is in 15k at the moment, and then it'll look like this. And then if I flick the little switch in here, then it'll look like this. I've got to tweak the uh, control board. But what I basically plan to do is um, get hold of a TriSync monitor at some point, or a TriSync chassis at least for this one. Um, they're kind of expensive, I mean they're about 150 quid, but I guess it's only one machine that I'm getting it for, so it's not going to be too bad. I think that's nice and adjusted there. But yeah, you may notice the, uh, <laughs> the VR buttons and the start button are all lit up. Um, I actually kind of want to get some kind of sequence activated with those who are in association with, in association with the emulators, but that's not possible just at the moment so probably shouldn't have them on all the time actually they'll probably burn out I mean I've got spare bowls but that's not really the point um, so yeah that's Daytona and it runs perfectly it really does the feedback kicks on in fact what I'll just do let's have a credit in uh, I guess yeah, fine beginner. Oh, this is going to be really difficult with one hand. <clears throat> uh, for this video, I guess we'll go with what I make, because I'm not actually sitting in the chair, I've just kind of. So, yeah, I'll just show you the wheel, how that reacts. I don't know if you can hear that. So, let me just ram into a wall here. I think I've got the uh, feedback settings a little bit high to be honest because <laughs> it does kind of go insane I'm not sure it should but yeah but if you can hear that ah, yeah that's the feedback motor giving it some and it's strong really strong going over grass so it's vibrating <laughs> but yeah, I guess that gives you an idea. 
Um, so what I'll do, I guess, is I'll just quickly run through a few games. <laughs> Look at it go. But yeah, I guess I'll just run through a few games and uh, kind of give you guys a little bit of a demo. Alright, let's have a go on Daytona first, since it's already loaded up. Uh, I guess we'll go for advanced. See how we do. Scotty manual. level just yet. I've been trying to get better but uh, it's really hard. Fifty four is a pretty good time for me. The other cars hit you, it really forces you off. I think I've still got to adjust the feedback slightly. I haven't played in the Daytona machine in about 11 years, so I'm not 100% how it should actually feel. It does feel pretty good. Decent time, not quite. Congratulations, you place nine. <laughs> So yeah, that's Daytona, I guess we'll uh, load up maybe a bit of Scud Race. Alright, so I thought I'd show you guys a bit of Scud Race next. Uh, it's got to be beginner because I'm a weakling. It's been about 11 years since I played this game, so I'm not too great. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, go on then. Probably a bad idea, but... <laughs> it is very different from Daytona. I think we'll stick with the standard view for this game.
face really rumbles your ass. <laughs> set up weird for the moment on this one. Oh. Always starts off in high gear. It's yet another game that I'm still quite atrocious at, but hope to get better at one day. Now this goes in MAME, it doesn't actually support force feedback, um, but if you use a little application called MAME Hooker, uh, that actually does support force feedback for games in MAME that have that kind of a control system set up. But I'll probably go into that when I do a little bit more with it. Oh no! Bastard. On. Never know which gear I'm in. Got a little on screen display thing there. I have to do something about that. Ah, shit! Yeah, I'm not much good. <laughs> get to about here. So I'm kind of just as crap. <laughs> okay guys so I guess that's it for my little demo of the machine. Um, I was going to show you actually the uh, L2 M2 adapter that um, converts the feedback for the Logitech to the Daytona feedback motor. Um, it's kind of a pain in the ass to get out though, and there's actually another video here on YouTube which I'm going to link to down here, um, which has basically the guy's got one of these on his desk and he's got the adapter next to it, and you can basically see how it works. Um, but yeah, I guess that's pretty much it for this video. Um, if you've got any questions uh, or you, you need anything answered, then uh, give us a shout or stick it in the comments, and uh, I'll do my best to um, answer them for you. Uh, if I get like enough requests to show something else on this, then I'll probably make another video. Um, but yeah, for now, that's pretty much about it. Um, if you have the opportunity to get hold of one of these cabinets, and you've got access to a Daytona control panel, um, it just slots straight into one of these because it's essentially the same panel, just different feedback motor. Um, I definitely recommend doing it. The adapter's not very difficult to make up. Um, the wiring to wire everything up isn't all that difficult either. Um, all the information is on the internet. It's pretty simple, straightforward. Um, if you've got like a soldering iron and you know the information in front of you. Um, so yeah, I guess that's about it. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, then uh, please comment, subscribe, and rate. I need those thumbs. And uh, I'll. See you guys later.